Welcome back to That's How You Feel podcast. We have a very special guest this week. He's a former Sacramento State football player, and he holds the Sacramento State all-time sack record with 33 and a half sacks and regular season record with 14 and a half sacks. Ooh, boy's a monster. He's a boy's a monster. He's a former second team FCS All-American. On draft day, he signed with the Cleveland Browns as an undrafted free agent where he's currently playing. We welcome to the show, George Obina. George, thank you for joining the show, bro. Really appreciate it. Oh yeah, it's no problem. Love being here. I love uh nah, I love y'all show. Y'all show is kinda tight. Y'all show is tight. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate it. How's how's it feel being a part of the dog pound? I mean, it's been great. Honestly, the fans are the best part. They've been nothing but welcoming. Like I love the city. It's great. I just been uh it's just unfortunate that I didn't really get to experience like the whole thing. So I've just been back in rehab because I, I got hurt during training camp. Well, hey, that's that's good that, you know, everything's going well. And, you know what I mean? Just stay patient, bro. Stay patient. Injuries are part of the game. Hey, but mm-hmm. right off the bat, though, bro, you, those biceps, you, you just do curls every day? Yeah. <laughs> bro, not even. No, <laughs> it's not even that at all. <laughs> this guy, this guy, bro, does not miss curls at all, bro. This guy is a monster, bro. Not it, bro. I'm not even big right now. I'm <laughs> hella small. It's been like nine weeks since I did an upper body workout. We, you're currently on IR, so what, what injury are you dealing with right now? Uh, I did something to my tricep during training camp, so I had to end up getting surgery to fix it. And then uh, literally just been on uh, going to rehab and kind of just trying to get back in shape little by little here and there. Mm-hmm. How's the recovery process been for you? It's been smooth, no issues so far. They've been keeping – they've been checking in on me, so it's been great. Uh just having somebody there at least. But, uh, no, it's been no smooth sailing. It's just, you know, we're getting to that part of the year where it's like, okay, it's been a minute. I want to get back into it. So it's starting to get at me a little bit. Right, right. And let's get into what George is before. How was uh, growing up? You grew up in Tracy, right? Uh, Yeah. Actually, I grew up in Nigeria. I was born there, and I, I came here when I was uh, around 11. Went to high school in Tracy. So I wasn't really uh, – I only was in Tracy for like five, four years. Then, like, I pretty much stayed in SAC my whole uh, career uh, – well, my whole uh, uh, undergrad, basically. Mm-hmm. So, literally, it's just been – How was Georgia in uh, high school football? How were you high school? Hold on. Before we even get to that, Nigeria, how was your experience in Nigeria, bro? Like, that's got to be a huge culture shock. Uh, it was at first, but it wasn't really that much different from what I've uh from really okay. over here. Yeah. No. What part of Nigeria are, were you from? Uh, I lived in Lagos. Like, okay. So talk about your high school football experience. What high school did you go to? I went to Tracy High. Were you were you a monster there too or what? I assume so. You have all these fucking records. I'm sure I'm sure you're breaking records over there too, no? I just started playing like my junior year of high school. Uh, really, 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 really touched the field to like my senior year, and yeah, Sac State just took a chance on me, and I just like really um, got along well with the coaches and everything. Just kind of like melded together, like it was a perfect fit. But you just had that 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 hunger to get better every year. Or what started from scratch, junior, junior year? That's a late start, bro. Especially playing football. Yeah, and it was just more so. Like at first, I was just kind of I needed to get do something to get my education paid for because I was really more so. You, Using school to get uh, using football to get school paid for, but I, you know, along the line, I started like really love the game. I love what football like does for me, like mentally and physically. So, talk about your recruiting process. You said just Sac State took a chance on you. Was there no schools looking at you? Was Sac State the only one that yeah. really took a, t- took a chance on you? It was a couple of schools, but Sac State was the only one that really put their money where their mouth is. Like, they uh, Coach Sears offered me a partial, like, off my uh. I don't think it was – yeah, no, it was Sears. It was Sears. Sears got me a, a partial, like, after, like, a little back and forth here, uh, a little back and forth uh, during, like, the recruiting, like, whole thing, recruiting. But it, that was literally about the only offer I got, so I just went with it. And Sac State was close, but – uh, How was your time at Sacramento State? Talk about your experience at Sacramento State, being a football there, football player there, um, some good memories that you like and, you know, some bad memories that kind of tend to forget about. I don't know. My favorite memories is still off that like seven and uh, I think it was seven and four year where it was like me, Ben, and like Darian. That was mm-hmm. like the coldest RD line, been, uh, the coldest D line I've been on in a minute. Like it was just uh, it was like it was a 
it was a pretty good year, especially like as a defensive, like just for our unit specifically. I was the most that was the most fun I've had a on our D line uh, since I like throughout my whole career at Sac State. What about other experiences? What, what talk about some revelations that you kind of went through? Some moments that kind of just man, like I know you were kind of injured throughout the process there too. You know, you had oh, to yeah. overcome that too. Yeah, I just uh, just getting dinged up here and there. Uh, football is just kind of like that thing. Uh, uh, I just had to accept injuries are part of the game, but I was I wasn't for a bit. I'm not gonna lie, like foot, the injuries do give you depression. Like you go to like some, uh, it, it, it's hard just watching the team practice while you're not doing anything, especially if you really like love your teammates. Like it's especially hard being hurt at that time. So uh, that was just some sh- uh, shit you just had to get through. Like and at the it was at the time I was lucky because I had like great friends. Like I had great relationship with my teammates. They like. They noticed like I was down. And they noticed when I was down. Like uh, Coop, Malik, uh, Darian, Wyatt. They all like whenever they. It was like I didn't really have to say nothing. They just sort of like knew when I was like, okay, I need a little bit extra push that day, or if it was like I needed some, uh, if I needed to talk some things out, they would just like come up and ask me first. And you know, it was just that 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 team atmosphere that I really. That's that's what really got me through those times and. Uh, that's what really kind of made me love football even more. It was really more so my teammates than anything. Talk about that mental, that mental difficulty, you know, when, when going through injuries, you know, even you talk about Odell Beckham, who year after year, he's going through not just, you know, those one or two, one or two week injuries, those out for the season injuries, you know what I mean? The mental toll that take that goes into that. Even Clay Thompson now who just recovered from ACL. Now he's with the Achilles just got even worse. You know what I mean? So, how difficult really is it for an athlete to go through that, those those injuries like that, those significant injuries? I mean, it's only difficult if you just if you're going through it by yourself. Like if you got, uh, if you have, like for me, if you have teammates, just for me speaking, for me, like if you have teammates that really will check up on you, like really love up on you when you need it, push you when you to get through your rehab, you should it should be a smooth process. Honestly, like you never really do anything alone. That's what I've learned. Mm-hmm. And like having people there, like to help you, has been a big, like, really been a game changer. Dope. So you had a great career at Sacramento State. Decided to go to the NFL draft. How pumped up were you? Were you nervous? Did you have that that doubt that you know maybe I'm not going to get drafted? I'm listening. I'm gonna have a chance somewhere. Talk about that. It's a little bit of both. Uh, I was like, okay, probably not. Like I was like, if I get drafted, probably gonna be late round or you know, small school. Like I was trying to be realistic the whole time about like my ex- oh, kind of managing expectations, but I knew like you know I had done, I had done at least to get enough to at least feel like like fourteen sacks really hard to come by. Mm-hmm. And I feel yeah, uh, for sure that's great production, yeah. Just, yeah, no, I'm saying like I feel like I've done enough just to get an opportunity, and I really want to see if I uh, well, at least an opportunity to see if I match up with the competition. You know what I mean? Like I didn't say like I, I'm not meaning like I've done enough to know to be like good enough to play. Like no, that's not. I'm saying I've done enough to get an opportunity to see where I stack up against them. That's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, like I, I don't think like I really had like I wouldn't say the word is confidence, but like I had like you know I might just go with confidence. Confidence is the best word I know how. Yeah, to definitely you need confidence yeah. to play at that level, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That's it. Like I had confidence in myself that I'd done enough to at least get an opportunity at that point. Like regardless of whether I uh, get drafted or not. So when was the moment you felt like, you know what, I can match up with these boys. I can play at this level. Yeah, like the second practice. Like the first time we got on pat, we put on pads was like that was my best day. Like that was the first time like I really, uh, like it kind of clicked. Like I was like, okay, I don't need to, you know, go do like anything other than my job. Like I, like I, I can do this basically. I can work hard enough to do this is what I'm saying. Like I saw a path that would lead to me being able to play at consistently and at, uh, at a good enough, at a good level at this level, basically. Dope. Hey, talk about real quick. So before we get into your, um, before we get into practices and training camp, talk about your draft process, like dealing with COVID, you know, you, you have a pro day, right? No. So everything was virtual. Talk to us about that. Uh, it wasn't really much else to do. Like, you just didn't have a pro day. So, uh, after the combine, you just waited for – you were honestly just at waiting on the phone for, like, a call from somewhere to, like, do, like uh, 
a call from a team to do like interviews and stuff like that with the coaches and uh, that was just basically uh, what I was doing. Like, I didn't really have anything else to do, just train and wait for a phone call or a message or something at some point. Talk about the combine experience, though. Was it well, – you, you hear the question – you hear the topic about, you know, when that, you have your interview and stuff and they'd be asking some mm-hmm. out-of-the-box questions. What was some some questions that were just like, yo, bro, like, what does this have to do with football? Did you, ever, did you have any of those? Nah, because I no? didn't really uh, – no, I look, everything like every conversation I had with a coach was about football. Then I guess the rumors are not true. Yeah, unless it's, unless it just depends no, on the player. I, I, don't know. No, I, I think it's just like different, like different people get different. Like you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So draft night, and we're going undrafted. How did you feel about that? Did you have a big chip on your shoulder? No, like it. Well, kind. Oh, well, I never really have a chip on my shoulder. Like I'm really just like. If this is the way I gotta go, this is the way I gotta go. It's not like uh, it's not like I don't really have like a like a a, a grudge against like fate giving me this. Like it's just it is what it is, and this is what I gotta do to get to where I gotta get to. Damn, so that's a good perspective. Well, what about the call? How was the call? Who I'm, called I'm you? Not gonna lie. I was a. Uh, it was actually one of the. Uh, I think it was one of the scouts that called me. Actually, I got a call after the seventh round from my agent, and he told me that I had, like, I, I had uh, the Browns was calling me uh, and asked if I wanted to be a free agent. They said he could get that down for me, and I was just like, hell yeah, sign me up. I'd love to be Blart because I already knew somebody who was on the team at that time. I uh, uh, I was training with Hooper, Austin Hooper over the summer, and I just uh, felt like, okay, it's a good fit because I already know somebody there. And he can help me out if I ever need, like, I could really go to him if I ever need, like, advice or anything along the lines of that because dude's a pro bowler. Yeah. So you signed to Rain Sports, um, your agency. Talk about, you know, what was important for you as far as checking off, you know, the things that you want in your agent. What's what's that process like? It's just like, he was good. as uh, A camera father, my agent, he was really good at, like, being transparent throughout the whole process. Like, I loved him. Um, how uh, he would tell me about, like, literally step by step what would happen and, like, even, like, had it detailed all down to, like, the month by month by month, like, all the way out to, like, even right now, like, he had a full uh, timeline of what I would need to do at during a certain period of time and help me out uh, with uh, questions. Like, he even said, like, he would, uh, he wouldn't trip, like, if I went with another agency, he just wanted to, he just wanted to let me know, like, the information I needed to succeed. And I think that was what really, like, sold me with him because he was super, I don't know, he was knowledgeable, he was transparent, and he helped me out a lot. That's basically what I needed. So you go from California living to Cleveland, Ohio. How was that transition? Yeah, it was humid. I didn't, I've never been, like, it was pretty humid. I'm, that was the one thing I noticed about Cleveland. It was, it was a lot humid than California. Like, during the, when we started running, like, I noticed I wasn't sweating. Like, I wasn't able to sweat because – there was just so much water in the air and I was out there just hyper, like I was about to die, but like you get used to it. You get used to it like fast. I know. And like, eventually I started like to really like, like the humidity. Yeah. Really? What, about, what about, what about the snow right now? I saw Jarvis Landry posted a video. It's fucking a blizzard. Oh uh, yeah. No, I'm not in Cleveland no more. Oh, you're not? Okay. That. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> but do you, are you I'm ready to go back out. to Cleveland? <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait. Uh, yeah. it's, it's looking rough out there. I'll wait a little bit. I'll take my time. Yeah. But yeah, no. Any quick spots, you know, for us that, you know, or people that want to travel to Cleveland, any like restaurants that you recommend so far? That has brewery. Best wings I ever had. Really? I, I really. But all in all, like Cleveland generally just has like better comfort food than it. you can get out here in California. That's cap. That is cap. No, that's not true. That's not that cap. That's cap, George. Cap. Go get a pizza in Cleveland or even Chicago, like this is right next door. But like go get a deep dish pizza and have like it it completely demolishes California. No shot. Bro. Those cats. The diversity you, in Cali promise. though. You can't you can't do that. Cali has Mexican, bro, American, dude. Italian, everything. Yeah, y'all have that, but they have better comfort. What do you mean, y'all? What what mean, y'all? You're like, from Cali you're, too. You ain't even a part of us exactly. anymore. <laughs> uh, I I just I'm being objective here. I know what good food is good food. <laughs> okay, I respect that. So you're living the NFL life now. So how's that? Talk about, you know, your diet, you know, your workout plan, your, your whole schedule is surrounded by, or just football, 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 like 
No, not right now, honestly. Because I'm rehabbing. well, even even the rehab have... rehab process too. I mean, that's still part of football too, bro. Like that's mm. a big deal. How's that transition been in your in your life? It's really not that. <laughs> Honestly, it hasn't really even been like a big thing for me because like I'm used to, uh, like I've had been hurt before, so it's like it's just going through it again. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I already had a template for like how to get back to where I needed to get to, so I'm just kind of following that template, like just basically doing the process all over again. How has it been in the lock in the same defensive lineman uh, meeting room with Miles Garrett, Sheldon Richardson, Portis Gustis? How was that? What knowledge have they passed down on you as well? I was there long enough to like really get that much. But I was kind of like when the amount of time I had there was only like enough for us to like, you know, get to know each other as a group, but not really enough for them to start passing wisdom. So like well, what I could tell, though, Miles knows a lot about football and Porter is the dude that really sells. Like that's a guy that you want on your team. That dude sells out every single play. Mm, he does. Richardson is, has unreal footwork. And Sheldon Ogajobi is just a monster in the middle. Yeah, you're going into a great defensive lineman, too, room, right? Like, they're a bunch of – Yeah. No, those guys know know what the hell they're doing. Nah, but who really uh, – what's his name? Ovi is quite one of the best uh, technicians I've seen in a minute. Olivier Vernon is kind of – that dude knows what he's doing. He makes it look so – yeah, he he makes it look so – I don't know, easy, because every movement he does is textbook. It's crazy. And I don't think he gets enough enough shine. I mean, he was with the Giants for a little bit, but I don't mm-hmm. think he gets enough shine. Or he's, well, he's dealing with a little bit of injuries. That's he's why. one of the most underrated players mm-hmm. in the league, I feel like. Like, oh, he's focused yeah, this every year. Mm-hmm. No, definitely. That dude is – every play, he's in there. He's that yeah. guy. And then we can't argue Miles Gary is probably the defensive player of the year. Or he's probably might be an MVP talk with Eric Donald, too. Yeah, he's, no, that – He's different. He's yeah, different. that's it. He's just different. He's different. That's yeah. all I got to say. He's different. Well, he's like what? He's like 6'6"? Six, six? Yeah, 6'6". Six, six. Like 270. 270. Six, he's six, fast. I'm not he sure. Yeah. He has power. He's got massive hands, dog. He's got mass, like huge hands. Like when he gets his hand on you, it's rough. Damn. That's kind of what I used to do uh, to the tackles at Sacramento State, too. Here we go. Uh, we didn't yeah. even ask about that. We, we uh, always ask the, the Sac State players of any Bethel stories. Was there any stories that you can recall that, you know, you could light this motherfucker's ass up one time? Hey, take it Boss. easy, bro. Take it easy. Nah, it was cool, bro. That's all. It was, it was just a homie, bro. That's what everybody says, bro. Yeah. A lot of res- everybody has respect. I get a lot of shit from family and friends like, oh, you're a water boy, you're a ball boy, you're this and that. Yeah, but- dog was cool. Beto was Told like you. my guy. On the- we had good times, man. Being teammates with Odell for a little bit, Jarvis Landry, I know you're you're in the IR now and you're not there, but mm-hmm. um, just seeing, you know, their dedication to the game, their work ethic, how was it like being surrounded some, by some of the top players in the league like that? Honestly, they the way they like – like, you would think, like, you'd go into the locker room and, like, you'd be starstruck. But the way they came – like, the way they come to you first, like, they're super approachable. Like Really? They came up and introduced themselves before I even went up to them. Like, they were super uh, welcoming. Like, they – like, it was a matter of two days. It was, like, just talking to the bros, like, in a lot talk, – like, talking to your bros in the locker room. That's what it was. Like, they're super approachable. Those guys are genuine. Like, you know they care about football. They really just love the game and they want to impart like what they can to you. Like they want everybody to win. That's the kind of guys they are. Team first type of players for sure. Yes. Definitely. And see, that's, that's what, you know, we need more athletes and teammates to talk more about that. Cause the media just talks mm-hmm. heavily about, and, and, and like we'll use o- OBJ as an example, right? Like he's selfish. Mm-hmm. He's this, he's that. That's but not everybody always all. says the, oh, literally the opposite about him, right? The same thing with that's other players yeah. throughout the leagues. Man, he just seems like a team player first. He loves the game, and he's flashy, and that's okay, but he's a team first type of dude. So, you know. Well, it's like he's earned the right to be flashy. Like, you see the, right. the, the plays he's made. Like, you can't, like, talk shit and not back it up. He backs it up every time. So, it's not like you can't you can't get mad at somebody for back. Come on, dog. Yeah. Max. No, that's, that's something that, you know, I kind of mm. love about him, too, is you see him on social media and stuff, him personally – and he just seems like that type of guy that's fucking cool to hang around with. Like, he, he's a mm-hmm. jokester. Like, he's always dancing. You know, he, he's, 
got that personality to him that's fucking like yeah. dope to be around. So I can imagine like if you're in the same locker room with him, he's gonna be mm. a cool guy. Yeah, and it, it's like it's not like he's like like that or twenty four seven. Like dog is serious. Like when in practice start, he's locked in. Mm. He's like tunnel vision with it. he looks. He's literally all about like football within that period of time. Like he manages it. I don't know what else to say. He's I don't like I don't think people see that part of him enough. Right. What about Baker as a leader? Do you respect his game? I know he takes a lot of criticism too, but how is he in the, in the locker room? How really, do people respect yeah, I him? Never, like, we didn't really talk to the quarterbacks like that. I don't really know. From what I could tell, Baker was just super serious. Um, he really uh, took like he really took everything. I don't know. He just seemed like the guy that people in a uh, like like the guy who uh, like from the head coach to the uh, person who cleans up at night loves to have at their place. That's what mm-hmm. kind of guy he seemed like he was. Right, right. Like everybody really respected him, and that's what I can see so far. If he's earned the respect of like from the top to the bottom, like that's you really a genuine stand up guy. Yeah, that's important. Hey, what do you, let's talk about a little bit of the Cleveland Browns doing a little bit of noise this year, huh? What do you think about your team right now? Hey, man, I'm just glad to be a part of this. Right, right. Yeah, well, they're, they're what? They're first in the divi- No, they're not first in the second division, but they're Pittsburgh. First in the wall card, yeah. I think. Right yeah, now. they're up there right now. Man, finally got a winning season. Yeah. Hey, you you got lucky though. You got to pass all the bullshit, bro. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think it's necessary. Like either way, like because we had a we had a uh, it's the same thing like at Sac State. Like we had a couple like years where we just did not like it. It was suck. It sucked to be. I'm be honest with you. It sucked to be. It sucked. Uh, just losing, losing, losing. Like and losing sucks, man. But right. you know, I think like that losing gives you perspective. For sure. That's why I have a lot of I, like, yeah, losing like gives you a like losing makes you want to win even more. I don't know how else to say it. Like you need to lose to like it helps you learn. I don't I I I think that's the best way I could say it. No, but I couldn't imagine like players like like Joe Thomas, who was with the Browns for like 10 plus years and never had a winning season. You know what I mean? How the mental toll that takes too, bro, to just to be a Especially you go to college, no, I, you go to high school, and you're a winner your whole fucking life. And then you come to the NFL, the league, the big dogs. You just you can't buy a no, win, bro. Yeah, but the thing is that he's also a part. He's just a part of this. It's like I am. Like you know what I mean? Like he set the uh, 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 the blueprint, basically. Yeah, yeah. He was the Browns, right? Like, For sure. That guy's a walking mm-hmm. Hall of Famer. Himself. He was the only one to yeah. make the Pro Bowl and shit every year. Like, Dude, he was a beast, though, monster, man. Yeah, and devoted to the team. I mean, to the to the yeah, exactly, bro. It's hard to fucking come by nowadays. You're recovering. How is that going? We mentioned that a little bit about it. Mentioned that about talk about it yeah, a little it's bit. Just, uh, smooth sailing so far. It's just got to the, uh, just progressing day by day. Uh, not really trying to like push it I, as far as like coming back because I know that's what's been my uh, Achilles heel in the past. Mm-hmm. But yep. yeah, I'm just taking it one day at a time, trusting the process, doing everything I need to do. You know, and I think that's a great point. It's George, I'll be the first one to answer this. George is always the guy that wants to come back before he's ready mm-hmm. because he's a team first type of dude. And you love that, but it's like, George, you need to get ready, bro. Your health is wealth. And I think that's, I think the number one thing with you is just learning how to be patient with that, right? What's well, your career now yeah. too. So you can't, you can't risk things like that. You got to take a patient. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So what are you looking forward to next season? You're going gonna to work for that that top dog spot right there next to Miles Garrett or what? Be on the other end? I mean, I'm always gonna I I'm always gonna work up work for that top spot. That's just who I am. I mean, I'm just gonna uh but you know, uh it doesn't like working uh hard work doesn't always equal results, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you never uh effort doesn't there we go, effort doesn't always equal results. So I'm just kinda uh but I would I'm the guy who understands like effort doesn't always equal results, but you still have to, you know, prepare for the best case scenario. So you, I'd still put in the work in order to get to where I want to be. That's big. You know, why not? Yeah. That's and that's kind of overlooked too. Cause I feel like there's a lot of talent out there, you know, that they just don't make a squad just because, you know, you're, you're at a different level now, man, bro. That these, there's just, there's just guys that are just like Miles Garrett. They're just specimens that are not fucking normal. The way they're made are not normal. You know what I mean? So you can't really take it to the, to the head that, you know what, maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe I didn't put enough work into it. Maybe you did everything you can, but it just doesn't, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly what you said. Yeah. No, there's three things that, I mean, there's three people that come to my mind about what you just mentioned, just looking especially man, uh, is George, myself, and Miles Garrett. Different. <laughs> uh, we're just built different. For what, hiking the bar or what? Damn. 
Here we go. Uh, that's how you feel podcast. We have what's happening question. You ready? Okay. Yeah. So you got, you rather do a bull rush or a swim move? I'd rather, uh, there's no rather for me. Like I choose both. Like I just do what's appropriate during that right, uh, like what's appropriate during the circumstances. All right, but you got to pick one though. I'll just pick one. What you go to? I don't know. Definitely a bull rush. I'll tell you. Like that. I'm a bull rush guy. That's just See, what I do. I'm not. I'm not. I'd rather do it. Like if I if I can come untouched, I'd rather come untouched. I'd rather do a swim move. It's just you know the game changes at like that sec uh, those during those fractions of a second. You got to yeah, make there's... adjustments on the front. Yeah, I'd but there's nothing like move. putting somebody on their back though. Yeah, but it's nothing like coming untouched either. <laughs> okay, yeah. I feel that one. Go ahead, ask him the next one. Would you rather work out? <laughs> Why are you setting me up with this one? <laughs> Would you rather work out with no shirt on or crop top shirt? Crop top shirt. Is that, is that, is that his thing or what? Bro, this guy, crop top or no shirt? There's no in between. <laughs> All right, next one. Sack force fumble or interception? Sack force fumble. Easy. Have you ever got a 100%. pick? 100%. Nah, I had a fumble recovery to the house, though. Yeah. I what, was your, what was your touchdown celebration? Oh, I couldn't celebrate. My legs locked up, bro. It was a long <laughs> run. How many yards was it? It was like 70-something. Oh, like, I damn. just didn't want to play. Yeah, I didn't. Like, it's, like, we had to go back on defense, and I was just looking at that clock like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I think that's something that gets overlooked, those those DBs yeah. assignment that, that pick up those fumbles or picks up pick. Or get a pick and they take it to the crib yeah. from 80 yards and they're able to still get it's a like touchdown out. celebration in? Yeah, no, those guys are in shape. <laughs> That's kind of <laughs> really good shape. <laughs> Madden rating <laughs> stamina. No, is but I feel like it's also overlooked, you know. You got to – your pass rush, you, you got to go, but you see a fumble, you got to pick it up. like, And you just, like, work for, like, six seconds. You got to pick it up and you got to yeah. run all the way back. Oh, yeah, no, that's a lot of work, bro. Yeah, I hear you. All right, the next one. Chick-fil-A or Popeye's chicken sandwich? Ah, uh, see, I don't eat either. Ooh. What are you eating right uh, now? Are you, are you vegan right now? Or are you vegetarian? I'm What's going vegan. on? I just don't like I just don't like uh uh I just don't like either, honestly. I'm not a big fan of like Chick-fil-A or Popeye's. Really? Bro, Cle- Cleveland's changed this guy. Yeah, bro. G- Cleveland is changing it- him, bro. No, I just was never a fan of either. Like regardless. Like I Okay, uh like it was always like oh hella salty or like hella oily or something like so that. So what's your go to never okay. had it a good place? What's your go to fast food joint? You're like in and out? What? Oh for three? Yeah. Oh for three. You're shooting bricks right now. No, I don't eat fast food though. You gotta realize that. You cook? Yeah, I always cook. Okay. I make uh, rice and chicken like eight multi- eighty different ways. Eighty? I've heard of 10, but 80, 80 though? I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating. That's yeah, <laughs> that's I'm big. Like, I make it a bunch of I make a, I make rice and chicken multiple ways. <laughs> All righty then. So he has no chicken sandwich. All right. not. He's missing out. I guess more for us. <laughs> Drake or J. Yeah. Cole? Don't say neither. If, the, if this motherfucker says neither, Bethel. Yeah, I know. I, I, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Guys. Is that tough? That's tough. Okay, good. That's the, that's what I wanted. Yeah, that's what I wanted. You gotta Got pick one though. No, bro. Uh, I just go with Drake because he got more hits. I respect, I respect that. Who's who's on your playlist? Who's on your what's your game time playlist with some of your favorite artists? We probably named two already. Yeah. No, I don't even listen to music before games though. No. Like really? I listen. Yeah, I don't. I like like complete silence. I think that's I think that's funny how like every player is different. Some players like fucking yeah. country. Some players like R and B. No, I like listen exactly. to music. Like, I want to hear. Yeah, like I want to like uh, cause I start visual like I do like visualizing like while I'm just chilling. Like I run through like all the scenarios in my head, and I just like silence. Like I don't like music. Like it interferes with, like my that that my whole process. How do you get yourself psyched up though? You just don't you don't need that. Just I don't first like psyched, I don't need big psyched up. Like psyched up. Like gets me. I don't like being like too high or too low. I just like right being there in the middle. Gotcha. Like gotcha. that's where I play my best. Like you don't want to get too revved up because you get an adrenaline and dump at like halftime. So yeah. You want yourself like playing even throughout the whole game. I don't know about that. If I'm if I'm a DN, I'm fucking getting some Meek Mill on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nah. I mean, it's, it's, no, it works for some people. It just don't work for me. Like I found like I play my best games when I'm even. Mm. Like, See, for me, like, I, I mean, when I work out, I listen to Usher. I have to listen to Usher. I either have two moods. I have Usher or Nipsey, right, to get me going. But Usher kind of calms me down, right? Like, so no. then that I pump, is, I'm just killing it. But silence, though, damn, that's a good one. That's tough. 
Yeah, I'd rather it's like we can play music after the game, you know, after we won. Like that's mm-hmm. when I like to like, you know, that's when I start listening. And that's when I just, you know, turn up to uh, whoever. Like I like Sada after the games. Yeah. All right. Next one. Better hands, OBJ or Jarvis? I have no idea. This is one of the questions I can't answer. Political it's political answer. Yeah. I'm gonna go OBJ. Like he's never seen like he never watched an NFL game, bro. I have. They both have excellent hands. Like there's no this is great insane. answer. Very great true, answer. Very true, very true. Mm-hmm. December, Christmas spirit, movies. The elf or the Grinch? The Grinch. Like that? That's how you feel? Yes, the Grinch. I hate that you just disrespect the elf like that. Like yeah, the Gr- I watched Grinch, the Grinch yesterday. Classic. Yeah, like you can't go wrong with the Grinch. Elf, you All gotta right. be in the mood for it for me. Yeah. All right, who's better, rock, paper, scissors? George or Bethel? Me. <laughs> Stop. Remember when I used to kick your ass? No, you didn't. What he was saying, bro. That's Cap? Cap. George. So much Cap. <laughs> George. <laughs> so much Cap going on right now. You want to run it? No, that's good. Not go. On. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm about to run right now. Yeah, hold on. Hold my mic. I got you. I got you. You, need, you only need one hand, though. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. What was that? <laughs> that was low. Bro. I don't know. The virtual lag? The virtual lag? But I don't know. I think it was I think it was time. Uh, what? That though. It was a vir- there was a virtual lag though. So I don't know. I don't know who's telling the truth and who's not. I got jo- rock. What'd you put? Rock, paper. Hold on, hold on. Do it again. <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. Wait, bro. <laughs> what? It ain't gonna work. You just gotta call it out, man. Just call it out. That's all you have to do. All right. We're going to call it out on three, okay? So rock, paper, scissors, and then call it out, all right? Okay. Do the rock, paper, scissors countdown. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock. Paper. (laughs) Got him. He got you. He's paper. paper. You dumbass. No, he waited for me. Uh, You you won. You won, George. That's a dub. That's cat, bro. That's a dub. Virtual lagging. Virtual (laughs) lagging. Oh, okay. I can't believe we tried to play rock, paper, scissors on fucking Zoom. That's going to (laughs) work. Bro, I used to smoke up every day. He used to come to me before practice. Hey, let's play. Let's run it. George, am I lying? What's the what's the all time record? Who's up? I'm easily uh, eighty to three. Easily three. George? Eighty to three. No shot. Uh, no. Zero. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Major cap. That's a big cap. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, George, we want to thank you again, bro, for joining the show. Best of luck to you this season. We hope you get well. Hope you get healthy and stay. Be patient, bro. Yeah, be be patient. patient. Your time's coming. Your time is yeah. coming. No, I appreciate you, y'all. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. No, yeah, we're in a, we'll, we'll definitely be supporting from the outside. You know what I mean? Number love from this way. Appreciate your support. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you tuning yeah. in and joining the show. Really do appreciate it, man. No, thank you. Appreciate y'all. Well, thank you guys for listening. Make sure you guys go follow our Instagram at that's how you feel. That's T H T S how you feel for all the fire content. We're telling y'all up to date news and music and sports. All the funny videos. Make sure you follow George on Instagram too, guys. Yes, George, you want to plug in your Instagram one time? Uh, I do not honestly because I don't totally. like it. my handle embarrasses me, so I don't like. Just like type his name in. Day. You type his name in, it's gonna pop up. Yeah, you yeah. type his name, it's gonna pop. And much, much more. Hey, yo, Don B, did we hit him with another one or what? Yeah, we hit him with another one, brother. Yes, sir.